Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jolene's Happy Time Craftcast. I am so excited that you're with me today. It's going to be, as they say, a great show, a super great show. And I am very, very excited about today's guest. She is a wonderful human being and a friend, which always makes it so much more exciting for me. Uh, we're going to be talking to Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations here in just a moment. But before I bring Hannah on, I just wanted to let you know a few awesome things that are happening at Big Raven farm. We have our full list of retreats. They are listed and ready to go. There are about 20 of them coming up in 2024. So if you are interested in a four-day, three-night getaway, Big Raven Farm might just have something that you'd be interested in doing. So make sure you check out the show notes and take a look at where those things might be. So enough about me. Let's talk about Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations. She has, she describes herself as a not crafty person and she's a math and science girl, but now she has an amazing business in the craft space. She is an expert at embroidery and she is very good at teaching beginners how to get into what I think is really a timeless and treasured craft. So without any kind of further ado, this right here, this is Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations. Hi, Hannah. Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> so how did I do? How did I do in that introduction? Did I get it right? Excellent, yes, it was perfect. Okay, awesome. So what is it that you would like our listeners to know about you or about your business? Like what is your like elevator speech? <laughs> Um, I think we talked about this before in my elevator speech. Like it's too long. It'd have to be a 30 story building for the full elevator. I love it. Take us, take us on that 30 story story journey. Um, I run an embroidery business, but um I originally was working as a physical therapist. Um, I went on maternity leave with my second child during the pandemic, and um, I found out that the job I had was no longer going to exist. That the business was closing because they couldn't withstand the the closures, the shutdowns. So in that moment, I was already doing embroidery as a little bit of a side hustle. And I thought I'd always wanted to start teaching other people how to do it and find a way to make it my full career. And um, it was sink or swim. This is the time. You don't have a job to go back to. You might as well make the most of it. So I started teaching people how to do embroidery on Zoom. I sent all the kits in the mail. We, we joined via Zoom. And then it just built from there. And now I have kits that are um, with recorded video tutorials now. So Hannah, who taught you? Um, I taught me. <laughs> I taught me. <laughs> so, um, I used the good old um, interweb and I, I went on YouTube. I had to search through videos and try to find good ones. And I felt like I was really kind of misled in a lot of different directions, learned some bad habits, picked up good ones, um, a lot of trial and error, and then eventually found my, my own way. So when you sit down or sit back and think about it, can you just even believe it that this is your life and your business and your following and like, how does all that feel? It's pretty weird because it's coming up on four years since all this started. Um, and it's surprising to me, I guess, like if you'd asked me 10 years ago that like, oh, you're going to, you told me 10 years ago, you're going to own a crafting business. And you're you're not going to be a physical therapist anymore. I would be like, well, who's paying my student loans off first of all, <laughs> because I had a lot of those, but, um, but no, I would never have believed you because I, I was never into any type of crafting whatsoever. I didn't start embroidery until, um, to the end of 2018, early 2019. I just, I look at your, like the, the wedding bouquets and like your level of artistry. And it's a little bit like unbelievable, shocking, overwhelming, magnificent that four years of experience can lead to the things that you create. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. I, um, the wedding bouquets that were definitely not something that I thought I was going to go in that direction. They were, mm -hmm. they felt very overwhelming to me. Um, so at that, I don't think I started doing, I think I did the first one in the middle of 2020. So I started in 2019. So I'd only been stitching for like a year and a half when somebody asked me to stitch their wedding bouquet. Um, but I love the experience of it so much that I, I, there was no turning back after that. Once I got my hands you know what with that then i was like we're, we're going this way <laughs> we're going with the floral so when you do the wedding bouquet like i mean that must be a pretty involved process right like you don't just look at a picture of a wedding bouquet and be like but i'm gonna make this in, <laughs> in thread now like what is that like 
Um, I have, I pretty much have it down pat now what I, my system of it is I, you know, I get several photos. I choose the proper photo that I feel like is going to fit in a circular embroidery hoop the best, yes. um, working with the client also on what they want it to look like in the end. And then I'll choose one photo that I feel like best represents the bouquet. And I will use an app called Procreate on my iPad to trace it. Um, and I'll trace it flower for flower, leaf for leaf, all down to all the details. And then I can um, kind of take away the actual photo of the bouquet and I'm left with an mm -hmm. outline of it, basically. So then I can transfer that to my fabric and I can stitch it. And do you do that with, because I mean, in your content, um, we see a lot of your stamping process where you've got a, a erasable ink, right? Mm -hmm. That um, it goes from, so do you need to make a stamp for the bouquets? Or no, how do you I, put it from Procreate to your linen or cotton or whatever? I will use heat erasable ink still, but I'll okay. use, um, I have like a rainbow palette of heat erasable ink pens uh, that are by friction and I can, or they're by pilot, friction, they're called friction pens. But I basically trace the that printed design onto the fabric, just trace it right through the fabric and I'll trace it in color codes basically that oh math my that gosh math and, and so i basically make myself like a paint by numbers this outline of the bouquet and certain colors will be certain the aspects. Just, just the level of artistry and when you are a self-described math and science girl i feel it with this because I stopped listening because that sounds really hard. <laughs> like I can't even imagine. But in my brain, it's like, it's the formula, right? right like that's to me, it's, and that's how it, embroidery in my mind is a formula. So it's like, I can, Amazing. I know what I'm trying to accomplish and I have to A plus B equals C to get there type of, type of thing. So. Right. Well, it sounds like, like how this hit you and how it like connected to you seems like kind of like a match made in heaven, really, you know, like I couldn't do what you do and I'm, I'm pretty crafty, but embroidery scares me. Do you meet a lot of people like me? Oh yeah. I feel like a lot of people are very intimidated by embroidery very. because it, it looks significantly harder than it is, significantly harder than it is. Embroidery is really a forgiving craft because if you make a wrong stitch, you just pull it out and try right. again. <laughs> or you, or you, even if you make a huge tangle, you just cut it out and try again. The, the fabric is forgiving. You know, it's um, it's not a craft that that needs to have that type of like stigma to it. I feel like it, it's more about people. People are scared of embroidery because you hear of like all the the tales of times past where the back had to be. Yes. Pristine. If the back wasn't pristine, it wasn't worth doing. And those are things of the past. Now we don't really have to worry about those things anymore because of the way people use embroidery now, yeah. uh, how they frame it now versus how it was framed a hundred years ago. So do you feel like you spend a lot of time like calming the minds of beginners? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like, Oh, say more, say more like this because I'm starting to feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm um, that a lot of my content is geared towards beginners because I'm mostly trying to get new people to join. Yeah. You know, I'm like, come on, come on, the water's fine. Um, because I was that way, like jumping into it being like, I mean, I fully expected to be horrible at it. It was like, I'm going to go to the store. It's, you know, I'm going to spend 15 bucks on supplies. If it, what's the worst that could happen? You know, right. I, I suck right. at it. Okay. I suck at it. Like it won't be any different. I, you know, I haven't been good at any other craft, so it won't hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> you know? The last Eureka, you're like right. this little protege at it. And like, and I love, so, so do you have a favorite project or technique? Because I mean, I absolutely love when you do content with the the big fluffy rose. I, I love those and didn't yeah. even know until I saw yours that such a thing was possible. I, I definitely, I mean, florals are definitely my game. I mean, that's where I find, that's where my passion is. That's where I get the most inspiration from is, but is florals. Like we live in a forested area and we have wildflowers everywhere and landscaping, you know, the, our flowers are everywhere and they just bring me so much joy. So I just put them right into my embroidery. But I think people see like those big fluffy flowers and they think 
like, oh, it must be so difficult to make mm -hmm. those. But one of my easiest, I have it sitting here. You want me to show it? Yes, please. <laughs> um, like this is my most popular. Okay, closer, closer, and closer. Lower, are there? So hold, hold, hold. There we okay. go. Oh my um, god, that's this amazing. This is my most popular beginner kit, and it is the, one of the easiest projects uh, uh, in embroidery. Like it's one of the easiest kits that I have of all of my beginner level so, kits. I've had kids as young as ten do this um, with okay, adorable. So I have to describe this for people listening on iTunes or not perhaps watching us live. And also if you're here watching us live, jump on into the comments. Can you believe this is a beginner kit? Like I, I would have thought a beginner kit would have been like a daisy or like, <laughs> like one solitary. Yeah. Like one thing. That's amazing that that's a beginner kit and comes with a video tutorial, correct? Right, right. All of my kits come with a step-by-step -step video tutorial of me stitching that design right along with you. So, and it's broken up into sections. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's very much like a paint by numbers. Like it, I'll teach you how to do, do just the stems. Okay, go do all the stems. You don't have to sit in front of your computer. Go do all the stems. All right, now come back when you're done. And then we'll, I'll teach you how to do all the leaves. Go do all the leaves. Come back when you're done. So. I try to make it where people don't have to sit in front of their computer the whole time. Right. They can enjoy themselves in the stitching process. Um, and it's, there's no counting. You don't have to keep track. I would never be able to keep track. I would, I'm so scatterbrained to try to do a project like crocheting or knitting, like where you have right. to keep track of something. I would never. <laughs> I could never. Right, right. I'm right. too that much like sense. squirrel. So, right. <laughs> yeah. There are squirrels in my yeah. house too, Hannah. I right. swear. Yeah. Like they're everywhere. There's something shiny. There's You're no right. way that I would be able to like count. So no, they're completely beginner friendly. They're meant for people who have never picked up a needle and thread before mm -hmm. beginner friendly. You don't have How to have exciting. any. Training. Like I'm a beginner. And as a beginner looking at that, saying that like, and seeing that that is possible for someone with my skill level, like really opens up my interest into the craft because my assumption was something like i said earlier is something like that is like four years of experience down the line like right. i can't believe that i as a beginner could make that and so i love when you say beginners can <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i'm always like you can do this the beginner this is very beginner friendly i used to teach a lot of classes live over zoom and then again in person once things let up i was yeah. allowed to do in person stuff and people would always come in, like you, you could tell who was excited to be there and who got dragged in, like who, right. who was the prisoners versus yeah. the explorers. Yeah. Forced. And they'd always be so skeptical and they'd be like, I'm going to be horrible at this. This is going to be awful. Mine's going to never going to look like that. And I have n never had a person walk out of one of those classes still saying that. I, everybody has been so like, I can't believe this. I cannot believe I just made this, like just in total shock. Well, <laughs> but, and Perhaps I didn't do a good job describing it too for folks who are listening and not watching, but it is a bouquet of roses um, with stems and leaves. And um, at the base of it, it looks like it's a bouquet that's like held together with like some satin or something like yeah. it is not. And it's three dimensional. So it isn't like a flat beginner looking right. <laughs> activity. Um, it's amazing. I, I, and I'm so impressed. Do you oh. get that a lot? Or people are just like, I'm impressed by you. Like you are <laughs> kind of amazing. I, well, people are very sweet in general. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think when people see, um, are more impressed with the, like the journey of it, of the, sure. you know, of the, like just have starting it when I had my kids as young as they were and, yeah. and losing my job <laughs> and all that stuff. So, um, more interested in the journey. And then I think a lot of times they're more, more impressed by my husband and the shed oh. I should, <laughs> where I work. <laughs> it, it, both are impressive. Both, yeah. both, both are impressive. So, so, okay. So you are a digital creator, right? Like we're making things for social media. So people know about our businesses. And then you also have this craft based business and, um, children and family and all kinds of things. So what's on your work table right now? Like what are you, are you able to work on anything for yourself? Um, I very, very rarely do anything that's for 
myself and I can't even say it's for myself because if I'm doing a side project that's not specifically mm -hmm. like going to become a kit or something it's usually right. a gift for someone else like I'm making something for yeah. somebody else so I just recently made my my sister-in-law I stitched um just the word mama on her on a sweatshirt for her for her birthday just a cute little you know right. oversized sweater which is a, just a fun it's a fun little way to gift somebody something customized so instead of just giving her the sweater I could give it to her with that little extra mm -hmm. mama on it. So um, right now I'm working on my next my next upcoming kit, which is going to be a bouquet of white daisies. And I'm actually that one's going to be really special to me because I name all of my bouquet kits um, after my favorite ladies or all of my like floral kits are mostly after um, my favorite women in my life and the favorite my favorite ladies. And so will there be a Jolene? Yeah, so there will be a Jolene. <laughs> there's going to be an Andrea. There's going to be right. a Michelle. There's going to be all these of our, of our group of friends. But yeah. also this one's going to be named after my daughter, Evelyn. So um, she used to always come up and hand me white daisies. Like we have a lot mm, of white yeah. daisies um, growing in our wildflower garden and in our, and in our landscaping. And she would, um, you know, I would try not to be annoyed when she would rip out my daisies, <laughs> but, but you can't be annoyed when they come up with their little tiny hands and hold you up a little Aww. bouquet of, of white daisies. So that's what uh, this one is. It's going to be named after her. So that's what I'm currently working I on. I love that. That is so, so sweet. So what I'm working on, so I, I am trying really hard to practice some completion and not necessarily move on to the next big thing until I finish the previous big thing. So my last big thing was taking taking my, my discarded book covers and I cut them down into two inch squares on my bandsaw. Mm -hmm. And because I have an, a, a wood shop gray bandsaw, um, I, it, the, it tore up the backs pretty good. So I had to spend, after I cut them, I had to skim off all the fluff that was created oh. from the size of bandsaw that I have, but I have a fence and it worked out and they were all the right size. So it was totally worth it. Um, but I tiled a room with book board oh my God. and using these two by two squares. <laughs> and like it was one wall? of those, a wall. Yeah, oh I did. Gosh. I totally did. That's and um, it was one of those projects that when I started it, I was like, you know, how, how long could this take, right? This, this can't be that big of a deal. Well, between the cutting, the trimming, the installing, um, and then later, you know, I gave it a nice coat of clear polyurethane so that they're going to be easy to clean. It ended up being like a three-week project. Oh my and Darren, my husband, helped me as well. Um, but now that that is done, I'm now kind of feeling in this really creative space with my book board because I keep everything from my projects and I have all of my book board color coded. And so now I'm thinking about doing maybe like if you can visualize a log cabin style quilt where okay. the squares are, you know, they're symmetrical. So like their aspect ratio, if it's two inches wide, it's four inches long. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about cutting my book board now into these log cabin type shapes and coming up with another design wall wall art based this time, but doing more with my book board. So that's what's on my work table. Well, and that's what's like when you when you said you stopped listening to me with the with the important <laughs> point over your head. That's why I'm like I'm like the guy with the with the math problems and right. in front of his face. So it's I'm like, like a like, big bubble. Yeah. And it's, like, what? it's like floating. Yeah, I'm just like, what are you? You're, you're speaking in German all of a sudden. My connection bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. English, Jolene, English. Yeah. yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But isn't that great to have friends who have like, like, I admire your math and science and the formula put into embroidery. And I feel like it's, like it's accessible. And I feel like with me too, like with my art, you know, book folding or paper folding or paper sculpture, it looks way more difficult than it is. And I think for me, like, I just get so excited about using all of the components, mm -hmm. you know, like I like to figure out something else to do with it. Like behind me, you know, some people put wood in their fireplace. <laughs> I put books. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think as an artist, you can always appreciate the mind of another artist. Like even right. if 
you do something totally different than them, like you're in a different realm. Like my husband does woodworking. So like when he throws together, you know, a castle for my kid, I'm like, and his blueprints were on like a post-it note, you know, I'm like, I, that's, I mean, talk about over my head. That's right. crazy to me. So I can always appreciate, you know, other artists and their thought. Process. Right. Yeah. Well, that is it. Isn't it just art appreciation? Like, um, and especially, and speaking of that, I have another cool thing to tell you. So something that I've been trying to do on the Happy Time Craftcast is always see if I can't pull in some really great news from the world of crafting. And I found an article and it's open on my computer somewhere so I can cite the source. But let me first kind of tell you what this article was about. The article was about how crafting leads to better health. And some might have some skepticism about that and be like, hmm, you know, that's just crafters justification for <laughs> buying and doing. But really, scientists for years have been studying this ideology of flow. I did not know that because I'm a yoga teacher. And so I just kind of thought that flow was something we made up in our yoga world about, you know, it's basically being in the zone. Mm -hmm. And this article talking about flow, like was bringing crafting back to when we are in a state of flow, we are not thinking about ourselves. So we are not focusing on, you know, some of those recurring voices that mm -hmm. say things that are disparaging. We're not focused on um, comparison syndrome that happens to some of us with social media. Like we quiet some of those voices. The other thing that they said happens when you get into this state of flow is that you are quite centered on the task at hand and you are relaxed and comfortable. And therefore, it leads to better brain health and better physical health. So it seems to me that there's always really great news. But do you ever feel like when you get into the zone, like can you identify times when it feels like yeah, this is probably actually pretty good for me. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, I originally started doing embroidery because I wanted a creative outlet. I didn't start mm -hmm. it with the, nothing with the intent of becoming a business. That's for sure. I just sure. wanted something that was like solely mine. And that was time for me, you know, being a mom. Um, at that time, I had a almost three-year-old. I just wanted, or she was, she was just two. I wa just wanted time for me to have something that was... Mm -hmm. For myself so yeah definitely being able to kind of turn off everything else and focus on my project and um you know have not have my mind racing in 18 different directions of what needs to be done what is right. what, what what am i forgetting and like you know what's when's when's pick up when's drop off <laughs> you know right. well and so when you're stitching what else are you doing anything else i mean i already know the answer but our listeners <laughs> might not so are you doing uh, anything else when you're stitching um i am typically listening to audiobooks or or music so depending you know on the on my mood in the day but um so you know, currently, I'm re-listening to all of the um, A Court of Thorns and Roses, the Akatar series by Sarah J. Maas. So, um, I've you're starting back at the like, beginning. I did not know that. <laughs> I listened to all five of them. Um, I highly recommend. Uh, but I, I listened to the graphic audio version, yeah. which is basically like a movie in your mind. There's a, the full cast with sound yeah, effects and the they're audience. walking through the snow and it goes crunch crunch yeah. crunch yeah <laughs> so if you're if you're unfamiliar with me like i work in a shed in my backyard that we're on 10 acres in the forest in michigan so it's already like a very peaceful place mm -hmm. and like you can i can really go in the zone there for sure because there's no disturbances around me right other than when squirrels visit me and a hummingbird flies in or something <laughs> it's very magical already but if i put my headphones on and I am immediately transported into like whatever book I'm in. So currently I'm in Valaris with Rattan <laughs> and Cassian <laughs> um, enjoying um, the the world of, of Sierra J. Moss. That's <laughs> awesome. So I too, like I'm a pretty big podcast person, but I also... Um, Libby has just become my all-time favorite app, and I've been able to consume so much, so many books 
um, even though they're coming in through my ears, but I think I'm up to like 42 books in the last, I don't know, six months or something. Yeah. Um, and right now I'm actually listening to a memoir by Tara Westwood. It's called Educated. And oh, okay. Yep. Have you heard of her? It's, I have. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. And I've discovered that in audiobooks, I'm really getting into memoirs. Um, like Chantelle Miller's I Know My Name, like just really great stories from really amazing women. So um I highly recommend, in addition to the yeah. A Court of Thorn and Roses, <laughs> um, these two particular memoirs have just been awesome. But I guess my question too, Hannah, is when you are listening to an audiobook and you're stitching, do you feel like you are still able to achieve the zone? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I'm, especially if I'm stitching a wedding bouquet, like if I'm, right. if I'm working on a kit, I'm more like a, a project that's going to become a, a beginner level kit. I'm a little bit more, I guess, like in, in a business mindset, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking about like, okay, how can I make this look challenging, but be beginner friendly type sure. of thing. Like I want it to look really impressive, but also still be beginner friendly. So I'm, I'm more, um, working, I guess I would say, whereas when I'm doing a wedding bouquet, like I'm on a different planet. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to I'm in the zone. Um, that's where like, I could definitely be snuck up on because I'm so into what I'm doing that I right. wouldn't care if someone was walking up. <laughs> I'm in the well, zone, yeah. And how many of the wedding bouquets, like I imagine that's a commission based, you know, product. Mm -hmm. um, like how many of those do you take on? I only take three to four a year uh, because they take me roughly, a total, totally roughly 40 hours ish to do mm -hmm. from start to finish. Um, and because I do the the beginner level kits and the kits are the, the bread and butter of my business. So uh, that's where my main focus has to be throughout the year is creating and, and promoting the kits. So I really only have time to dedicate, um, only have enough time to dedicate to three sure. bouquets a year. So I usually, I open, I will open, be opening up my wedding bouquets for 2024 on March 20th of, okay. of this year. So, and I'll only have those three spots for the year. Until, well, until it makes I sense. I mean, it is quite labor intensive as you have described. And mm -hmm. I can only imagine the, like the time commitment mixed in with all of your other commitments that I think that absolutely seems reasonable for a project of that size. And, you know, actually you talking about your kits is a really great segue. Like, do you have like a little project that our listeners could try or a, a project you recommend for them? I always saw when people ask me like, what kit should I start with? Like of mine or where should I start if I want to do embroidery? I kind of go at it in one, and two, one of two ways. If you're a perfectionist, <laughs> if you're a perfectionist and I'm not, so I, it's hard for me to put myself in that mindset. But if you're a perfectionist, I would say to, to jump into a full course because you're going to want to learn every little detail. If you're a perfectionist, you're going to want to know how to do it and how to do it right. You don't want to learn the, the back ways. Sure. You don't you don't want to learn like the, the quick ways. You want to learn how to do it right. So I have a full foundations of embroidery course on my site, um, which is just shortforestcreations.com. And it's a full two hour recorded course uh, that teaches you everything you need to know to start doing your embroidery. So if you're a perfectionist, I usually say go that way. <laughs> but if you're someone who's just like, I just kind of want to test it out. I just want to jump in. I just want to try it. Yeah. Then I usually say to just jump in with one of the beginner level kits because they're they're all meant for beginners they come with the video tutorials you get everything you need in the mail so it's it's really just like here on a silver platter just right try just try it like what's the worst that could happen type of thing and what kits do you i believe you've released some new kits recently yeah yeah so i just released the um i'll show you this one the wild flocks kit so this is a um, again beginner totally beginner friendly um kit and this one is extra beginner friendly because you're learning the same flower five times. Like you're repeating the same steps to create one flower, you know, five or six different times, depending on how you look at it. So it's a nice way to kind of jump in without being overwhelmed. You're not you're having to learn 18 different stitches for one right. little project. You're learning four different stitches and you're just repeating them and being able to gain some proficiency at them when doing them multiple times. So this is my newest beginner friendly kit. But if but when people ask me like what 
which one's your absolute easiest. That's the rose bouquet that I've showed earlier. So the rose, and this one comes in, in three different colors. So the original is the Lindsay, which is the pink one named after my sister-in-law, um, Lindsay, who's one of my very best friends. And then my husband's sister. And then um, uh, two other color versions of it, the McKenna, which is like a dark red and the Kayla, which is yellow, canary yellow. And those are Lindsay's daughters, my nieces. So it just it was perfect that I had two extra colors. There you go, McKenna and Kayla. I love it so much. So um, the what comes in the kit? Like what can a person expect? So you get everything you need except for scissors. So the only thing that you have, you absolutely have to have out that's not in the kit is scissors, but you get the hoop with the, um, the design. You can choose to have it already stamped onto the fabric and the fabric is already set up in the hoop for you. And the stamp is heat erasable. So when you're done stitching, if there's any design marks like still left around the edges, mm -hmm. those can be erased just with the heat from a hair blow dryer or like a medium set iron. So no one will know if your stitching wasn't absolutely <laughs> perfect. Right. Um, so that you'll still have a beautiful finished project that you can hang on the wall. So you'll get that the hoop with the fabric and you can choose to have it pre-stamped or you can choose to get a heat erasable ink pen in your kit and you can trace it yourself. It's very easy to do. You're just tracing right through the fabric. Uh, you'll get needles and you'll get felt for backing to cover your stitches so that it doesn't matter if your stitches are not perfect. No one will see them. You're going to cover them with felt. And then um, of course the thread. And I give always give ample amount of thread so that if you make any mistakes, if you have to cut anything out, you have more than enough thread. So I've, I've really tried to think of everything mm -hmm. to make the kids as beginner friendly as possible. So that if you make flubs, you make mistakes, it's okay. You can right. correct. Well, now you and I are kind of laughing a little bit because we probably have some insider intel about the stitches on the back and yes. <laughs> not being perfect. So can you tell our listeners, what is that drama about and why is that a thing? So uh, people, anybody who's a traditionalist is, is immediately like going to start throwing up <laughs> because um, they're going to be rolling. They're going to hate me. Um, I because i'm because i'm just my main goal is to get people into embroidery is to just try it out i don't emphasize a clean back i don't emphasize the tried and you know the the tried and true kind of the because back it used, it, right? it used to be a thing right it used to be a thing yeah back in the day the back had to look as clean as the front it should look okay, why? like the why? same the reason why it was kind of multiple reasons. One reason being um, a sh just a sign of your skill level. Yeah. Another reason being um, the way that it was framed. So if an embroidery was going to be framed as artwork, it was going to be matted. So it was going to be pushed flush up against like padding, you know, the way you would yeah. mat something. And so if there's lumps and bumps and running threads in the back, then it would make the fabric look lumpy on the front when you matted it. So okay. there was that reason when you would stretch and mat it. And then also if it, the embroidery was going to be used in a functional way, like it was going to be like a tea towel, you were embroidering something on a napkin or a tea towel, then people would see the back because they'd be, you know, wiping their hands with it or whatever. And you'd see the back. And if there's a big mess in the back, obviously it doesn't look nice. And also you could accidentally catch threads that way and ruin the work. But now, so if I'm teaching somebody how to stitch something on clothing, 100%, I'm teaching them how to, te to do it as clean as possible for all of those same reasons. But if it's just going to stay in the hoop for display, I'm going to just show you how to cover the back with a piece of felt and no one wants <laughs> to see the stitches in the back. So it doesn't matter. So, so you know, because now we have these framing options, like, and I'll show you with, um, so this is just a wooden embroidery hoop frame. So these hoop frames are amazing you can just take your finished work that you've that you've sealed in the hoop and just pop the whole hoop right into a wooden frame and it's ready to hang you can just hang this puppy right on the wall and it's done and no one's ever going to know what the right. looks like. i love that nobody's ever going to know like don't be looking at the back of my stuff <laughs> yeah so to me it's like i in my course of course of course i teach the proper quote unquote ways to do things and to how to keep a very pristine, clean back if you choose to do so, and if you want right. to do so. But I want to make embroidery more attainable to people. So I don't want there to be this, always to be this pressure of you have to have the back as clean as the front or well, it's it, not worth doing. 
Well, and because you and I are friends and right. we've got other friendly folk in a daily little chat, like I know that people come at you for they do. <laughs> the, not having a clean back. So talk to us about how surprising is that and how do you feel about it? I was I was honestly shocked the first time somebody commented something really kind of nasty to me. Uh, I was like, this is I mean, and just for perspective, like commenting nasty to you about your thread, like yes, <laughs> yeah, sorry, right? I mean, like, Julia, what is that? Um, it's got, they're commenting something that was just really rude um, because I was sh I was showing the back of one of my wedding bouquets maybe a couple years ago um, when, because I was closing it. I was showing how I was closing it with a piece of felt. And also my wedding bouquets are more definitely can, would be considered modern embroidery because I'm using more three-dimensional techniques. So of course you're going to have a lot of thread buildup in the back. Like you're going to have a lot more thread to deal with in the back because you're using, I'm using um, a, just techniques that create density, you know, create a lot of texture. Right, like so the three-dimensional roses, if it's three-dimensional right. on one side. So ergo. there's just going to be more bulk in the yes. back when you're, when you're creating three-dimensional work on the front um, with what I'm doing. So with the type of embroidery that I'm doing. So I was closing the back and someone was like, you know, the, the front is beautiful, but like how disastrous, like that back makes me like want to puke. My grandmother's rolling in her grave. Like, you know, I mean, just really over the top comments of like, you call yourself an embroidery artist. Like, what? oh, like, I mean, people are real, really that's unleashed. so mean. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. And so I had somebody once tell me I should go to school. I should go to, to school for embroidery. Um, because there is a school, there's a full collegiate program in England at the Royal School of Needlework, which is amazing. Like the stuff they do is okay. absolutely incredible. I think I sent you that link. I yeah, was like, yeah, look at this really, place. Not <laughs> it's fascinating. But they're doing totally different um, right. types of embroidery than what I'm doing. And like I said, if there's for me, it's always there's a time and place for everything. And so for me, my wedding bouquets are not being matted and they're modern embroidery. They're not going to follow the rules of traditional embroidery because they're not traditional. So um, you can't place them under the same. Sure. Scrutiny. Right. Like. Right. Whereas like, you know, if I have a smaller piece or if I have a piece that's going to go on a piece of clothing, like I said, I, yeah. I know how to keep a clean back. It's just that I don't always choose to. <laughs> right. So, I mean, so so what do you, so you've put together a really nice little discount code for our listeners. Yes. You want to tell them a little bit about that and where they can, and, and like also too, if you could just reiterate, what do you say to beginners or people like me who are just like, embroidery seems so hard, like it's so <laughs> scary. <laughs> um, I, I, so the code is podcast. It's just pot, the word podcast and all awesome. Caps. P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Um, and on my site, which is just SherwoodForestCreations.com. If you Google Sherwood Forest Creations, I'll be the first thing to pop up. Um, or just go to SherwoodForestCreations.com. And if you use code podcast, you'll get $5 off of anything in my shop. So I have the Foundations of Embroidery online course. Um, but I also have the full line of embroidery kits, scissors, accessories, like all sorts of fun stuff in my shop as well. So um, if you want to take advantage of that, you can. Um, but I always tell people, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, really, what's the worst? If you want to give something True. to go, what's the worst that could happen? Most of my kits are um, anywhere from 30 to $50. So it's, you know, it's, it's not like it's nothing, but it's not like a, you know, a ridiculous investment if you don't end up liking it. Um, but I can't tell you how many messages that I get of people, I mean, hundreds at this point of messages of people emailing me photos of their finished products saying, I never thought in a million years I would be good at this. I never thought I would be able to find something that fed my soul this way, you know, that gave me such creative clarity, like just, and a lot of moms, because I think a lot of moms resonated with my story and how I started. So a lot of moms saying, I can do this with my kids playing at my feet. My kids are just playing around me and I can sit here and stitch because you can always 
pick it up and put it down. There's no right. setup. There's no tear down. I carry mine around in a Ziploc bag. I'm not even kidding. And I'm a professional. And I carry it around in a Ziploc <laughs> bag. I have one in the center console of my car at all times, in my purse, in my work bag, like just work, works in progress everywhere because it's so easy to just pick it up and put it down. So. Well, and it sounds like to get into this state of flow that I was mentioning earlier and like, like I, I do some stitching. I wouldn't call it embroidery. I would say it's a little bit more free form in when I'm making, because another thing on my work table is I'm working on a book made from fabric. So you know how I'm all about repurposed materials and keeping stuff out of the garbage. And I've been focusing on paper and uh, my friend Janelle got me looped into textile waste and just how much textile waste there is. Mm -hmm. And she is an interior designer and she saved a bunch of fabric from the earth for me. And I was thinking in my brain, I was thinking, oh, this will be nice to get like a little grocery bag full of fabric. Hannah, four of the large Costco tubs full of fabric. I was gonna say, can I send you more? <laughs> oh yeah, and it was just, and it was just one day, one one interior design firm on any one random day, and they're on these little cardboard swatches. They're all the exact same size, and I was like, I can make books out of this, or I I can totally make something out of it. So I've been making like random shapes, like birds and rainbows and flowers, and like just doing a. I call it a whip stitch. I don't know if that's yeah. what it's called, but I keep whipping around it to like tack it into place. Okay. And and I love it. And I think, and I also know how to do a blanket stitch. I was going to say, you could use a blanket stitch. On yep. The edge like yep. That. Yeah. I can do a blanket stitch because I made a bookboard quilt. So I took pieces of leftover books that were all the same size and I punched holes in the border. And then mm -hmm. I did a blanket stitch around with a non-stretchy cotton cord. And then I crocheted a border. And then I crocheted them all together to oh make my a gosh. book wow. board quilt. That's so, amazing. Oh, it's so fun. It's one of my favorite pieces. And my sister-in-law, Megan, she helped me put it together because I was doing, um, it was my first art uh, installation in like an art gallery. Oh and I goodness. really wanted my bookboard quilt to be there and I wasn't quite done. So she helped me with it. And it's obviously one of my favorite pieces, but I know how to do a blanket stitch. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. I always have trouble on the corners, but I kind of know how to do that. So like just the idea of me being able to get a Sherwood Forest creation and the video and learn how to make a stinking flower, like brings me so much joy that it might be possible for someone like me who believes it's so far out of my scope. I think a lot of people think it's out of their scope. And we do. We I, think that. We totally think that. I know. And I, I'm always like, but why? Why is it so? See, it seems so much more difficult than like painting or because right. to me, like painting is out of my scope. Like I, oh yeah, like, you know, the stuff our friends do like I can't yeah I can't do that either <laughs> so like you know I mean to me I don't um it doesn't I yeah I don't understand I don't totally understand why it feels so intimidating to people but I always I just try to encourage them like you know what's what's the worst that could happen right. I guess people do have like the fear of of failure altogether but to me it's like you have to be worth you have to risk you know sucking it at it like right. you know to being bad at it in order to be extraordinary at it so well you'll i'm just so delighted to know that with the code podcast i can get a sherwood forest creations kit for five dollars off and that these amazing beautiful like skilled looking kits are accessible to beginners like that's like the happiest news of the day <laughs> i did not know that like i honestly thought the rose kit was an advanced kit no, yeah, that's my my best seller. My best selling kit is the rose bouquet for sure. Um, the pink. And is I the talk best. to you every day, and I didn't even know. Yeah. I feel like I haven't been listening. <laughs> I only have one intermediate level kit, and that's the butterfly. And that one um, is the same color palette as the as the Lindsay bouquet. Mm -hmm. And and even that, it, I only consider it intermediate because it's time consuming. Like it's one that I mean, you really have to. Um, commit to the project, <laughs> but, nice. but because they all come with the video tutorials, when I say they're step by step, I mean, it's like, I'm like, put your needle here and put it here. You know, like, I mean, it's you very, are speaking my language. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. 
they're not reference videos. It's not like, oh, here's this one stitch in a straight line. Now go do it in a spiral. You know, like it's oh sure. It's do it. Here's the shape. Here's the stitch. It's very um there's no gray area. <laughs> so what I really am taking from it, Hannah, is I can sense and feel your systematic math and science girl logic in breaking this down into a systematic approach to doing this like I mean, is it like an ancient craft? Like people have been oh, doing yeah. like yeah, for forever sure. and just making it more accessible for modern women who might have these, like me, these preconceived notions that it's just unattainable without years and years of practice. So I feel like, like you've opened my eyes to like not being so intimidated by this craft. I think. And, well, I think that's what I'm trying to do. And I think sometimes that doesn't come across when you like for the people who who like to leave rude comments. And they're, they're very few and far between. Sure, <laughs> so sure. I mean, it doesn't make it sound like I get them all the time. But um, is that I'm not trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel. It's I'm not trying to, um, to, sure. to teach people the way that it's taught at, you know, the in the actual schools of embroidery. I'm just trying to make it accessible to the modern day woman, like you said. So which is exactly what we need because we've been afraid of it for so long. Yeah, right. Right. So um <laughs> you're a genius. You're just basically <laughs> a full on genius. Like bringing this down to earth. To, you know, I just want people to find so because like, I felt like I couldn't do anything. It was a running joke in our family that I was like like if we were playing Pictionary whatever team I was on got like a, an extra point to start with. Like, what do you call that? Like when you, they get like an extra, because I was so horrible at it. Like I a par like, level or something. Yeah. 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 So they're like, Oh, okay. Well you guys can start with an extra point. Cause yeah. you know, no one is more surprised than my mom that I have a crafting business because, uh, because that's how bad I was at anything else. So I think that's why I'm so passionate about it is because I found something that, that I feel so so passionate about and that I feel confident in that I didn't think was possible. Well, and I would say that you and I are kindred spirits there because like everyone assumes that I'm going to be the best Pictionary partner because I'm so <laughs> crafty and artistic. I am terrible. I can't draw a duck. I can't draw <laughs> like anything, um, but I am your guesser. I'm an amazing guesser. There you go. Yeah. Darren made a triangle once and I guess Matterhorn. I still <laughs> hang my hat on that, that we got that. So like That's, we have other gifts. We bring other, impossible. Right, we bring other yeah. things to the table. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, the, you have to bring what you can to the table. Exactly. That's your strong suit it was the guessing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I cannot tell you how thrilled I am that you came on Jolene's Happy Time Craftcast today. Of it's course. been an amazing conversation. Would you be surprised to know that we're nearly at the end of our time? Totally. Um, but before we transition to our very last segment, um, which I completely stole from James Lipton and inside the actor studio. We have 10 <laughs> questions that we're going to end with. I just want to tell our listeners about a few fun things that are happening at Big Raven Farm. Other than our retreats, I, like Hannah, um, have a number of kits that are available for sale. Um, and I just released my Starry Night Sky kit. Um, it is origami stars and uh, twinkle lights on a remote um, that you can build onto um, a wreath form with some twine. It's a beautiful hanging mobile. And we just released that one, I think, yesterday. Uh, so if you're interested in that kit, it is available along with illuminated stories, uh, my magnificent mums, my library wreath. I think there are about 16 different kits now. And you are always welcome, of course, to join our craft club, which is a monthly subscription where you get one kit a month and then we make it together on a live. And it's the good kind of craft club where if you don't want to make that particular uh, kit, you just hit the skip button. Um, I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire and have you make something that you're not really interested in. So thank you friends so much for joining us today on the Happy Time Craftcast with Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations. And we're going to get into our final segment, which honestly has kind of become part of my, my favorite. So Hannah, what oh, is your favorite word? <laughs> <laughs> and it can be two words, but what is your favorite word? <laughs> uh, um, okay. Um, my favorite word. Um, oh gosh. 
now I can't even think of it because they're, one of my friends always makes fun of me for saying like a very like proper sounding word all the time. And now I can't even, I can't even. <laughs> You mean like an English lady or something? <laughs> yes. Like it's like, um, you know, it's like the word astute. It's like something like that. Like where nobody says that. Like, why right. would you say that? You know, type of a word that is not commonly used in the English language. But I would say like any word like that. I love words that are unexpected. Like sure. old words that are unexpected. To, like if someone says to me, alas. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, just marry me. That's amazing. You have like a little Jane Austen, like in the back of your head going, <laughs> the serendipity of the moment. <laughs> yeah, like when someone says touche, I, I just get the biggest kick out of that. So, you know, probably something like that. Touche. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, then what is your least favorite word? Um, I mean, I have a lot of least favorite words, I guess. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? I so I'm want to know. I'm all here. Um, Good. <laughs> I, uh, um, I mean, anything that sounds like, like yucky, like a mm -hmm. gross word. I used to really hate the word potty. Oh, yeah. When someone would say like, oh, I have when I hear like a mom say like, oh, I have to go potty. I'd be like, you're a, you're a full grown woman. Why are you saying right. potty? now that I have kids and like, you just get in the habit of saying right. potty. I'm like, a really walked right into that one. <laughs> well, I'm with you because mine is, I hate, I hate the word booger. And oh, so yeah. I have to say it like this. I say boogar because oh, I can't God. even stand, I can't even stand it the other way. Like yeah. it makes me crazy. Like I don't. Fringy, like, like, oh. Right. So I make it French. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. So what turns you on, like creatively or spirit? Look at your face. Like not read the whole sentence, like not the beginning part. <laughs> Hannah, read the whole thing. Why are these questions? What is happening right now? Okay. For those of you who can't see her face, she didn't read the rest of it because she just got to what turns you on. But the rest <laughs> of it is creatively, spiritually, or oh, emotionally. My um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I would, well, I'm going to say like anything nature based, like, so yeah. florals for me, for sure. So like, like I said, we have a wildflower garden, the wild flax kit that I just came out with is based on the wild flax that grow like rampant in our woods mm -hmm. and come springtime. So like any of those like big, um, florals, florals, greenery, like anything like that for sure. Oh, yeah. and, and then just like nature in general, I always, always felt like a very like strong spiritual connection to, to nature. Well, and even your, for those folks who have been able to see your workspace, like your shed, the she shed is inspirational just to even look at. Like it just has a full vibe of nature lover. Yeah. Like I could just, I see you like in the flow stitching on the porch with, you know, sure. with the family about, <laughs> dogs yes. about, all of that. Yeah. I love that. So to the reverse of that then is like, what things kind of turn you off? Um, uh, noises, like annoying noises, like a repetitive Same. drip noise. Is like one of the worst noises um, ever. Like, or if our neighbors are like mowing the lawn, or like those types of noises mm -hmm. will definitely throw me off, um, mm -hmm. off my game for sure. I'm right with you. Darren um, plays a lot of jazz. And um, <laughs> not a jazz fan. Okay, no, no. And there are some like musical riffs where I just have to look at him with like one raised eyebrow. Like this is driving me absolutely crazy. Like a repetitive xylophone or something yeah. like that. And I'm just like I'm an evil temptress right now. Like I hate that sound so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, our Nathan's working in the barn and with his power tools because it's the barn is directly across the yard from the shed. Yeah, and I'll be like in the sun, and then all of a sudden it's like. Ring! <laughs> noise pollution yeah. is what I call that noise, yeah, pollution, noise pollution for pretty. sure. So, what's your favorite curse? Oh, oh, that's what I was gonna say for the first one. For the first <laughs> one. What's your favorite word? Um, um, I mean, probably the best one. Probably right, the big one. one. The, the big one. Probably. I mean, I, I, I used to be before the kids. Uh, it was, it was bad. That now one? it's like we lock it down. There are we have we have different words for everything. Sure. You know, um, but yeah, still probably 
the good you one. Know, we, we actually have, so we have, a, we have a yoga mat that has that word across it, the luck rhymes with luck word. Yeah. And underneath it, it has boxes and it comes with a piece of chalk so you can check it. So it's, yeah, you, this, that, <laughs> and me. <laughs> there you go. And you're just make that one a sticker. Right. So depending upon your mood, you can just like yeah. let the whole world know like where you're right. at. This so, is where I'm at. Um, so we kind of already hit it, but what sound or noise do you love? Um, definitely like the birds chirping, like the birds and the frog, because we get a, the birds and the frogs, so our frogs will go crazy because there's a pond right outside of, um, of the shed. And so like the frog noises. Um, Me too. For sure. Until I had a pond, I didn't know. My frogs don't say ribbit. <laughs> my, <laughs> my frogs sound more like, like crickets. Yes. That, yeah. Like it's like a chirping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like what I thought it was going to be. And mm -hmm. so people say the crickets are really loud. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Those are the frogs. <laughs> those are frogs. Yeah. Because I think isn't it the type of frog, like a bullfrog? Or yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Ours are more cricket sounding, but they're very loud. And so, and I, I'm with you. I really like that noise. Yeah, I do for sure. So what sound or noise do you hate? I think I, we got a couple of them, but is there one specifically? Definitely the like the sound of, of dripping water. Yeah. I don't like the sound of running water either. I know that's supposed to be like so soothing to people, like the sound of running water. My mom has like a whole bunch of those like fountains. Oh yeah, yeah. We have a couple of those. Every time I'm at her house, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> please turn it off. <laughs> For some reason, it's like a sensory nightmare to me is um the, the sound of running water. Isn't that interesting? Like, I feel like this whole, these 10 questions are like a, like a whole psychological quiz in some kind of a way. Like, what yeah. does that mean that Hannah doesn't really like the sound of running I don't, water? like, I mean, uh, the ocean, sure. Like, I like sure. the crashing waves. Like, yeah, but like a, but like a trickling water I is. Think I think it, it's anxiety for me. Like, it makes me feel anxious in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a big loud crash, I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. And smooth and soothing. Yeah. But like yeah. the little baby ones, it's kind of like, I also, <laughs> this might be TMI, but I also <laughs> don't like tickly touches. Like if you're yeah. going to touch me, touch me. Like I don't like any of that gentle no. stuff. <laughs> Tickling. No, I hate to be tickled. Like I, me that, too. that makes me want to like jump through the ceiling. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We must have some kind of sensory issues or something. Yeah, so. I mean, bold. Bold sounds. Right. Bold sounds, bold touches. Like, yeah. <laughs> mean bold it. Yes. Yeah. Mean it. <laughs> Don't just tickle tease me. Like, get in there and really mean it is what I mean. <laughs> so what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? And so we can say, you know, Hannah's a doctor of physical therapy, that. She's an embroidery <laughs> artist, that, an educator. So outside of those two things, anything else you've ever thought you'd like to attempt? Um, actually at one point I thought for sure that I would be an actor. I thought for sure I was going to be an actor, uh, really? on, on Broadway. Yeah. So it was very delusional. Me <laughs> too. Delusional. Yeah. I was yeah. Sure. It's like high school musical nerd. Yeah, uh, me great. too. Mm -hmm. And then we, here we are making content do, on TikTok. <laughs> do you ever like think about doing like community theater or anything like that? I have I'm thinking about, about it. it. I have because we do have like a little playhouse by us. Yeah. Um, but you know, in my life right now, the time where do right. you find the time right to commit to something like that when my kids are still very little? So, um, I would like to eventually do something like that. So, you know, I'm an empty nester, so I'm now kind of thinking about it. And yeah. my community um, theater group has reached out to me and asked me if I would be involved in the next production oh, this God. summer. And they're doing nine to five. And okay. I think I would love the Dolly Parton role. And it kind of seems like it should be because I'm Jolene and like yeah. that kind of seems like <laughs> right. that should be a thing. Um, so I'm, th I'm definitely thinking about it because. I love that. Right? Like I kind of think that. That would be a great, like, welcome back to the stage, sassy, boisterous, boobacious, yeah, you know. <laughs> for sure. Oh, my gosh. That sounds so fun. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about it. But, you know, it. it's kind of like you, like, my confidence from that time is a little, little long-toothed, as it were. So we'll have to see if I feel like I can really do it. But I didn't know that you and I had that in common. That's very, very interesting. Yeah to me. So is there a profession then on the other side of that, that you would not like to do? 
Oh gosh. I feel like there's a lot of things I wouldn't want to do now. Well, cause now like being, being able to work from home and having this business and having complete autonomy as to when and how mm-hmm. and what duration I work and everything, right. like anything where I had to be like in a nine to five, like where I had to be somewhere at a certain time until a certain time, mm-hmm. um, as I used to with physical therapy, like that seems like almost impossible. <laughs> and it doesn't almost feel like employed. you are, like, I feel like I'm unemployable. Like yes. I can't be employed by anyone else because I've been employed by myself for so long. Like I couldn't even imagine it. It would be very strange for me right? to, have to do anything, anything like that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The structure of it. And mm-hmm. I still work contingent at the, at one of the PT clinics in our town. So mm-hmm. I just pop in, I get to play like knight in shining armor and just pop in when like somebody's sick or somebody wants to go to Mexico and I'm like, all right guys, I'm here for your vacation. And then, and then I leave. That must so, feel amazing. It's nice. I have like, I really enjoy it. Cause I can, I feel like I'm being so helpful by popping in, right? and, like, you know, taking some of the load off of the rest of the staff when one person takes vacation. Well, and do you like, do you have to stay fresh too? Like in your doctor of physical therapy, like, will it expire or like, do you have to continue? We have to keep a license. Yeah. yeah. So we have to, I still have to do continuing education. I don't have to work a certain amount of hours or anything, but you have to do continuing education every two years and re-up your license and everything. So it's like the, it's perfect because I can still, I pop in, you know, anywhere from like once every month. Sometimes I'm there a few times in a month and sometimes I'm not there for three months, like just based on their schedule. That's awesome. That's so awesome. So, yeah. I have one final question. Whoopsie. I have one final question for you and it's one of my favorites and it's just, it's just this little ditty. Whoopsie. That right here. So if, Okay. If there is an afterlife, what would you like to hear the welcome party say when you arrive? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, probably something along the lines of like, you made it. <laughs> You're here. Hey. Woo! Good to see ya. Yeah, you know, like, you made it. You're here. Like, take a load off, you know, type of, Neat. like, something along those lines of, of you made it it was worth it yeah that's that's beautiful i also think to you they would say something like did you bring your ziploc did you bring did you bring your ziploc baggie of (laughs) embroidery in your bag yeah (laughs) that would be such a cool afterlife like just crafting or making like that sounds like happened to me yeah right i mean Mm -hmm. if i like it all your favorite things have to be there or like it won't feel like heaven, exactly. right? <laughs> right. That's not very heavenly. If like, well, my favorite stuff isn't there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I wish. I hope all my my dogs are there. Right. You know, the pets you've lost along the way. And... Oh, that's such a great idea. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna steal that. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. definitely gonna steal that. I love. Yeah. That. <laughs> Well, Hannah, thank you for this. I mean, sitting down with one of my favorite people for an hour, like what a cool job I have. This is so fun. Thank you. And thanks for being here. And thanks to all of you who've been listening on our live. We've been streaming to YouTube and Facebook and uh, Stitch and Instagram and LinkedIn. And we've got all kinds all kinds of fun folks. And if you're listening on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, thank you so much for joining Jolene's Happy Time Craftcast. Um, Join me next time where my guest is going to be, oh, I'm going to have to put that in the show notes because I I didn't plan or think past today, but I will make sure we give you a good solid heads up. And thanks, of course, to Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations for spending this past hour with us and making embroidery seem not only accessible, but certainly achievable for beginners like many of us. So thank you, Hannah. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you for having me. It was super fun. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye.